Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this APM in Focus webinar. My name is Martin Mwebia, and I'm part of the team that provides student support here at ACCA. And this session today is designed to support your preparation for the Advanced Performance Management exam with a special focus on the examiner's reports, which is a very critical resource for you as you prepare for your exams. So on this session, I'm very pleased to be joined by expert tutor, Z Kang. Hi, Z. Hi, now, Marty. Now, before I hand over to Z, I'd just like to cover a few housekeeping items. Um, at the bottom of your screen, there are a number of buttons that you will find, and they're going to be very useful uh, for this session. So there's a help icon on the left, and that provides the resources and information to help you uh, resolve any technical issues that you might experience. You'll see some icons for the slide and the media player. So you will need to see both of these during the webinar. So just make sure that you've selected them. There is an attendee chat function, which will enable you to engage with fellow webinar attendees. And that icon is on the right hand side. We will refer to a number of resources and the list of those resources is available. You see an icon that looks like a file symbol. So on that icon, you'll be able to access the resources that we mentioned in this webinar, including the direct links. Please know that you can rearrange your screen to suit you and resize the windows if you need to. And in case at any point you can't hear what we're saying or you can't see uh, the presentation, please do refresh your browser. Now, do not worry if you miss out on any part of this session because the recording of this session will be available. So you should receive an email tomorrow with details of how you can listen to it again. So no worries if we miss out on any part of this session. Now, I'm going to hand over to Z in a moment. And if you'd like to ask ACCA or Z a question, then please click on the Q&A button, which is a middle icon at the bottom of your screen. And we're going to have a session towards the end of this uh, webinar where we're going to respond to those questions. So do put in your question uh, bright and early. Now, I think that's it in terms of the housekeeping. And without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to Z to kick us off with the session. Z, over to you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you from all the parts of the world to attend this APM In Focus webinar for March 2024 examination, Examiner's Report Unlock. My name is Zikang Chan. You can just call me TK uh, in simple. I'm the expert tutor for APM examination. To take you through to these sessions, I would like to start just giving a little bit of the introductions about who am I. Um, I'm based in Malaysia, and I'm a Malaysian, and uh, I'm the fellow member of ACCA as well as the member of the ICAEW. I have been teaching for the management subjects uh, series in the ACCAs, including PM, FM, AFM, and APM in the past 20 over years uh, at several countries, including uh, Uganda in Africa continental and several other Asian countries. And right now um, I'm in Malaysia and I'm also teaching in Vietnam as well. I'm also currently leading the Professional Accountancy Center in one of the Australian-based university uh, located in Malaysia. And I'm also conducting some of the seminars for the government body and the public sectors in Malaysia as well. So this is who I am. Now, it's time for me to know a little bit about all the audience uh, who are now watching and attending this webinar. So to kickstart for these sessions, as you can see, these are the three main agendas that we have for this session. I would like to take you through in the short while about what is so useful and valuable in the examiner report. Now, I'm quite sure examiner report is not something that is totally new to most of us here, uh, but how do you use it? And how do I use it as a tutor? Uh, what are the things that a tutor would have done by looking at the examiner report as comparing to what you would have done or you have been doing as a student on the examiner report in the past? Now, by making a comparison between what you have been doing in the past and what I will be doing, 
uh, that perhaps would give you a eye opening on what are the additional efforts that you could be doing from now right up to the examinations in March, which is exactly about less than a month time from now. Uh, that would give you, I would say, a reasonable, a comfortable period of the time for you to take some changes, which the more changes that you can pick it up from this webinar, I would always tell the students, the more changes uh, that you decided to do it from now until the examination, is there's definitely more rooms for a potential improvement in your performances and therefore the marks that you will get in APM on the upcoming examination. And of course, to make this event and the sessions much more fruitful, I will also go through some of the common pitfalls or common mistakes that what many students would have been doing in the past and what would be the right way to overcome and to drop away the bad habits to replace by the good habits. So these are the things that I would like to highlight in the second part of the agenda on some of the exam techniques and the good habits to pick it up. Finally, I would love to pick up some of the live Q&As from the floors and pertaining to what are the materials and what are the kind of the last minute preparations that you should be doing uh, before the examinations in March. And of course, that doesn't include the kind of uh, the tips on, in terms of the exam topics, that is not really the kind of the focus in this part of the sessions, okay? So don't ask anything about tips, but it is more about what is the right things to do. So how do you do it right? And this is some things that we all learn in one of the syllabus, in the APM syllabus under activity-based management. Now it's time to apply some of this technique on life to deal with and managing your examinations performances in months to come. Great, let's get started off unlocking the most recent examiner's report, namely September, December 2023 sitting. Now I'm pretty sure uh, by now you should have glanced through the September, December 23 exam paper but as to have you also seen and read through the examiner report? Well, it's time for me to know a little bit more about all of you guys by you answering the following poll. So guys, just respond by clicking on the choice that best describes which category that you belong to right now, honestly. And let's see uh, the statistics in the short while. So please respond to this poll as quickly as you can. Great, I can start seeing some response coming in. And the rest of you, it would be great if you tell me which category that you belong to. The more that I get the samples, um, the better for me to understand uh, the majorities behaviors, and that will allow me to address some of the key areas in a more fruitful and effective way for all of us here. So let's give a couple of seconds to go on the pool that I'm asking which of the following best describe the examiner report to you. Are you uh, on A, which uh, examiner report is some things that never cross your mind? or examiner's report is something that has appeared in your mind but hasn't been doing much on that physically or thirdly has it been some things that serve as one of the must read documents and papers before you go for the examination okay so without further delay let's take a look at the result from the poll there we go right so it is a very typical bell-shaped curve Guys, do you notice that? It is a very beautiful uh, bell-shaped curve, which uh, a large majority of us here are aware that is something called examiner reports. Uh, but then, have we been using it regularly uh, as we should? And the answer is obviously it is right in the middle over here. Well, I think that is the purpose of you attending this webinar on these sessions because I hope by the end of these sessions, in the near future, when you have any remaining exam papers to take in ACCA, 
let's try to make this bell-shaped curve to become a skilled curve where there will be more numbers and more percentage to be shown on choice C of the answer. Because as a tutor, I'm sure whoever that taught you on APM, no matter what learning materials or learning methods you are taking on, I'm sure any tutors on APM would have spent a lot of time, including myself, in reading the examiner report whenever they release. Don't expect that, well, the examiner report is always repeating the same thing. Do not think that way. Okay, there's always some new messages, new reminders that examining teams will like to tell the world. And I think examiner report is the, one of the best documents to communicate uh, between the examining team and the students itself. So I think this is one of the must-read documents by students, uh, not just occasion, but it is a must-read document as one of the must-do things before you go into the examination sessions. Why are we and why am I so emphasizing on examiner report? I'm going to show you by unveiling the secrets of examiner's report. I will show you how much that you were supposed to know, but you didn't. And what you were supposed to do, but you didn't do that. Or you thought it was right in that way, which is otherwise. All these things would be clear out the air by reading through thoroughly and in details on the examiner reports. But of course, last but not least, without mentioning the most, the most crucial step, it's the implementation phase. So are you determined enough to implement by adopting some recommendations and suggestions that are given by examiner report? Do you see those kind of physical changes that go into your own behavior? Or only when you turn those recommendations from examiner report into your own habit and behavior, you will start seeing a physical improvement in your marks and the exam performances in times to come. So that is what I would like to just highlight the importance of implementing the suggestions from the reports to you. Great. Let's take a look at what me as a tutor would do on the examiner reports. Guys, I'm not sure that what you are doing, uh, because 80 over percent of us have seen the examiner report, um, what have you been doing with the examiner report? So let me show you and share with you what I would be doing when I look at this examiner report. Firstly, before I turn on what's in it, I will first spend some time to take a look at the exam questions on the practice platform. And ideally, I would definitely attempt the exam questions around on my own. It would be wonderful if you manage to re-attempt that set of exam questions in the time constraint condition. In other words, in the real exam condition, you have got your, your answer. It's not model, but it has your answer in your hand. You refer to the examiner report. Now, I know some of the students may not be all. Some of the students would have the habit of self-marking your own answer. Am I right? What do you do when you self-mark your own answer? You definitely will look at your own answer. And what do you compare with? You compare with model answer. And the model answer is not found in the report. Do you agree on that? But what do you normally notice? When you compare your own answer with the model answers, the gap is so vast because the model answer is a perfection. That is not something even me would be able to produce as an experienced tutor for APM. I couldn't, honestly. But there is another source of the documents that can tell you a more practical, a more realistic type of answer that an ordinary, a reasonably well-prepared student would be able to produce within the time constraint. Yes. Where is the answers coming from? A more realistic answer, a more down-to-earth answer is the examiner report. Do you think so? So your answer, instead of compared to the model answer, why not you compare to some suggestion and some samples in the examiner report? Don't you think that will give you a more real reflection of what you could have been done better within the time constraint, within the limitation? That would give you a more useful, in a way, it's not feedback because your exam is not happening yet, 
it gives you a feed forward control information. Guys, do you notice that in this session of the webinar, I'm using a lot of terms that you have seen in this kind of exam papers, because I would like to show you if you really appreciate what exactly is in APM, guys, every single content in the syllabus of APM that you learn, you just use it. You use it to manage your exam performances for improvement purposes. After all, that is what APM is teaching us for. Do you think so? So I, I am telling you, using these documents called examiner report as a feed forward control instead of feedback, okay? Anyway, you can always take a look at the study hub, check out the meaning by clicking into the, we call flash cut in the study hub to find out what's the meaning of feed forward control or feedback control. If you haven't got a clue, what's the meaning of that? So the answers were found in the flash cuts found in the study hub. So let's continue on that. So therefore, guys, before I turn into the detail of the report, I would definitely Take a look at this, which is the exam papers. Now, since we are at these examiners, uh, I mean these exam papers, guys, I'm sure every one of us would have different habits, or I would like to call this as SOP, Standard Operating Procedure, the way that you do things. Now, I would like to share with you the way I do things. When I look at these screens, which is the practice platforms that shows me the real exam questions, I, I will ask myself, if I'm the student on the exam day, when I look at this in front of my screen, what will I be doing? What is the first thing I would do? So what is the first thing you would be doing? I'm sure most of us will start in the same manner as I do. But as we move along, then we start to deviate the parts. So I'm going to show you generally the sequence, the step that what am I doing? So first and foremost, before I show you the sequence, please bear in mind some of the important habits that what APM taught us. Try to impose, try to adopt what TQM, Total Quality Management, that taught you. Try to impose what the just-in-time philosophy that taught us. Please do things when needs arise. So please carry out and perform a task or carry out an activity when there's a need, when it benefits you, then you do this. Otherwise, keep it aside. Don't do that because that will take up your time. That is what we call wastage, okay? This is what I'll do. I will first open up, turn on the requirement, glance through what's in there. Now, other than that, where's the next things I will be reading in this page? It is on the right-hand side. Now, I'm not quite sure. Do we expect all of us would have the habit of reading this part? Or you would have just like ignored this and just go straight and open up the exit. Guys, I would like to strongly recommend to you that maybe you want to spend a short time to quickly glance through this part, especially the narration by telling you what's in there what is in each of the exhibits. To me, by going through this kind of sentence, take for example, first item, organization information, what's in this exhibit one? It tells me about background. It tells me about funding arrangements of the organizations, especially these two information are found for both entities, which is Eastland Hospital and ambulance services. Well, obviously, are, are these two entities or are these referring to one? You can take a look at the abbreviation EHAS. Well, that seems to be one entity. So obviously, the background, the funding arrangements of this entity is all found here. So when I read the first exhibit, I know there are two main points. I have to pick it up. The background and the funding arrangement. Guys, you see, I'm using my finger to quantify to point out to me how many key information I supposed to pick it up. If not, when I read the exhibit, the volume of the words in the exhibit would have drawn you off. You would just lose your focuses. So what exactly that you would need to look for, you will lose the focus otherwise, okay? Next, then only I will turn on to my exhibit and read through that in detail, which I will show you in the later parts how exactly I'm turning on my exhibit 
to read up. So in simple, these are the steps I will be doing. And now I have turned on my requirements, which you can see right in the middle of the screen. Well, as you know, in APM, guys, ever since in the earlier part of the major change on the format, the style of the exam questions, all the exam questions in APM, especially when you read the requirement, you would not be able to see a precise task that you have to respond or answer. You only would know how many sections of requirements are there. There are three sections here. However, what is there to answer for performance management in NFPOs? What is there to answer? How many subtasks are there? We have no idea. H how about value for money? What is there to write about value for money? We have no idea. So obviously, this tells us you've got to turn on your exhibit and look for embedded tasks in the specific exhibit. Now here, I just want to casually gave you a suggestion. You can just try to do this kind of practices and try to do some experiment by trying these reading through all and as many past exam questions as you could. Usually, if you look at the exhibit, the first exhibit would provide and contain generic information, which is what you saw on the listing just now, generic. It usually would not carry any specific task that reflected onto the requirements, which you can see on the screen. The embedded tasks are usually start to be found from the second exhibit and onwards. Now, of course, I know this is not always true, but it is mostly in that manner and pattern. So you can therefore roughly count, other than exhibit one, you have exhibit two, three, and four. What a coincidence. There are three subsequent exhibit. How many requirements are there? Three requirements. And next, take a look at the title. Look at the title. Do you notice the title just match? So what does the matching of the title tells you? Most likely, I will expect whatever information I need, and especially whatever embedded tasks I need to find out to answer part one, where do you get it from? Most likely, this clue, this task is mainly coming from exhibit two. And of course, some of the exhibit will relate you to Appendix 1 and 2. So that is the kind of matching that I hope you will realize it, because that would directly affect and tell you what's the exam strategy and the habit that you should be doing in managing your reading habits. Instead of reading all, try to have this kind of matching principles applied. When I read Exhibit 2, my focus is to produce as much clue as possible to respond the hidden task in Exhibit 2, and I will place it in Part 1. And same thing applies for Part 2 and 3 of the requirement. That is what I would do as a student. So when I turn on the details of the first Exhibit on the left and the second Exhibit on the right, guys, I'm just throwing a question back to your own mind to think about that. How many times do you read this information? Now, there's no right, there's no wrong answer. You, you don't have to respond in the chat box, but it's a question that you can think about that on your own. How many times do you read this? Okay. Now, of course, many of us will have read more than one time, obviously, which is, I'm okay on that, but always make sure. When you read, make sure you read for purpose. You do not read for no direction, no strategy, and no reason. It will end up wasting time and read for nothing. Okay, read for purpose. So what do I mean by that? I will just show you a sample. Other than the first exhibit, which is generic one, second exhibit is more specific one. So if you take a look at the sentences, don't you think so the sentence carry some hint behind the scene, guys? This hospital has appointed a CEO who have been working in the banking industry in the past of his career. So what do you think about this kind of implication? Obviously, you would anticipate that somebody who have been working in the finance sector for long and now working and serving for this organization, which is government in nature, you would expect to see a vast disagreement, a vast discrepancy in the way of doing things between 
the previous experiences and the current organizations, don't you think so? Other than that, this is the part which I think some of us will have aware of this, but if you're not aware, that is what you should be doing when you practice your exam questions in the practice platform. Look out for sentence that something like, somebody will like you, somebody would ask you to do something. And please pick it up because that is what we call embedded task. In the embedded task, look up for the verb. What are you being asked to do? Are you being asked to discuss, to evaluate, to recommend, to analyze, or whatever? Because that verb will directly dictate and determine what exactly your answer should look like. And if you take a look at this sentence, if you do not read in D, you would say, yeah, here's the task. But guys, you would have missed a lot of specific tasks unless you pick a very closer look on these specific words that you see it is underlined in blue color. You have to relate to the background story. You have to make use of the evidences or the references in the scenario when answering and responding to these questions. And if you notice that there are four agenda, there are four tasks that you have to respond. But do you notice in each and every of these four tasks, multiple objective, financial constraint, and the other two, each of it, you have to address about the difficulty in terms of measuring and managing the performances and relating to the scenario as and when needed. So do you notice in each of these headings, there are three responses that you have to give and provide in your answer? Guys, that is in simple tells you what do you see in here. And coming into the examiner report, do you notice that? After looking at the exam questions, again, guys, this is just a summary of the processes. In fact, you should continue reading the whole questions and come up with your own answer before you come to here. So when you come to this page, which is in the examiner report, you already should have got your own answer. You already have your answer with you. And now you read the examiner report. Trust me, guys, you definitely will see a lot more and learn a lot more things that you would ever thought of. So when you read through the examiner report, what do you look for? Well, firstly, when you read the first exhibit just now, as we say, it tells you about the background and the objectives. Did you manage to pick up what are the specific features on the background? Did you manage to identify what are the objectives? How do you know whether you manage to pick it up? Take a look at the examiner report. Whatever you see in here, it basically tells you what is the important information in that exhibit background. Then, on the right-hand side, it basically contains the elaborations of tasks that you should pick it up from the second exhibit. So did you manage to pick up the task correctly and completely by reading the questions on your own without coming to this? If you counted, yeah, there are four tasks, and each task you have to respond on challenges in performance measurement, management, relating to the exercises or the background of the story, how do you know that you have left out any task or you managed to pick up all the tasks? Read these part of the paragraph in the report because this report would have told you what are exactly the things that you have to respond, which is here. The four tasks that you have to respond is number one, multiple objectives, financial constraint, measurement difficulties, political and legal factors. And last but not least, not, not forgetting to relate to the incidents, to relate to the proposals that mentioned in the storyline. So if you manage to pick these up before looking at this report and now read the report, yeah, exactly, this is what I have been doing, this is what I managed to find, and this is what the examiner report said. Well done, guys, congratulations, you managed to do it right. So that is how you practice by sharpening up your ability to pick up and identify the task that you have to respond. Finally, without forgetting, keeping an eye, spending some time to take a look at what exactly are the advices given by the examining team 
for you to maximize the chances in scoring the professional skills marks, such as when questions one is asking for a report, which is what you can see in the requirement, by showing, presenting the answer with a report format, including all the appropriate headings that would have given you a good chance to score full on communication skills marks. So this is how I would use the part of the information that I read in the examiner report that allows me to understand, dive down a little bit further to know what exactly the requirement is asking. So how have the students been doing in the past exam? Obviously, this would have very likely to also talk about yourselves even though you did not do the exam in the last September or December sitting. You have just done it before you read the exam and the report. Trust me, the bell curve, the bell curve would apply generally. Majority of the students would tend to have the issue that brought up in the comments found in the exam and the report. Well, this is just a general, a very brief comment about how what students are doing largely on this exam questions performances in their sitting. To me, it is definitely wonderful when I see examining team give a thumbs up and say, guys, this is what you have done well. But as a tutor and a student, what you should be even more emphasizing on is that what are the weaknesses that picked up detected by examining team? What are the pitfalls? Do you see the words on the second sentence? They say, many responses were underdeveloped. Uh, I'm sure you should know what is the meaning of underdeveloped. That basically means that you did not dive deep down sufficiently to address all the tasks clearly and completely. Why is that so? If you take a look at the rest of the sentence, to me, it is all about habits, and time management. Well, I'm not going to read one line by line and words by words for you. You can take a look at this. But in general and in, in summary, when you read up the examiner report and the examining teams addresses the certain areas of weaknesses and the, the area of concern to the examining team, I think this is what you should focus even more because the examining team will tell you how should you be improving further from that and what are the things that you should be avoiding in the future. These are the important and useful feedback information from others, which is now becoming your feed forward control information. To me, my suggestions to you is that whatever the examining team say, please embed it to your own habit and change it. You're going to follow up with the physical action by doing things differently. At least looking at your existing way of doing things, which is I call this as existing habits, which is usually what the students are doing mostly are top down. In other words, they pick up the requirement and they will start writing, they will start typing the answers. Just go endlessly. That is what we call a top down approach, which is to me, not a good idea because you will lose your control on the time totally. You, by the time you put a full stop on that, you probably will notice you have exceeded your time long ago. That is where it start causing the starting point of failure by mismanaging the time. So what you should be doing instead, guys, I think it's time for you to take a look at a, a new habit. And if you think this new habit makes sense to you, Make it to your own habits in the near future. Try to adopt a marker-friendly approach by making sure when you attempt each part of the task, please copy that task either from the exhibit. Most likely, it is from the exhibit. Copy from the exhibit. Break up the task if there are more than one. Use that as the heading to navigate the marketing team and say, here is my answer to respond to the first task. Here is my answer to respond to the second task. If you need to produce one, more than one key point to address a task, break it into subheading. Before you write a key point, write the heading. Once you have the heading listed out, then only you articulate. It is not like 
you write the first heading, you articulate, then you write the next heading. Now, that is still the existing, the old habit. What I mean here is that when you know this is the task, think about how many points, how many key points that you want to address based on the marks awarded. And of course, based upon how many target marks that you wish to grab from that. So once you lay out the key headings, then you articulate. That is a better way to control your time management, guys. That is what I meant by the new habit, which is much, much more, I would use the word, demand-driven and well-time managed. Guys, if you read further, here are the specific comment, a very in-depth comment from the examining team, what students have been doing, which is not a good idea. More importantly, as I say, when you want to learn for room for improvement, it is this kind of message that you should read from the examiner report in detail. The examining team even tells you, for example, so this is the way you write. Guys, try to compare this statement with the model answer. You will understand a lot better what I have just shared with you. This kind of answer is definitely much more doable and much more practical within the time constraint. And you as a student will definitely be able to produce such type of written answer in APM. That is something you should pick it up and learn from that. Well, as the ending part of this message regarding the specific comment, that is another part that the examining team has drawn to your attention. If you look at the first part of the three lines are underlined in red color, these, these questions is designed allowing you to have the opportunity to share some real life example. Now, please, when students feel that we have a chance to share the real life example, they start bringing in their personal real life experiences and put it in here. That is again a bad habit. Don't do that. Do not quote your personal real life example. The, the background, the real life example you should quote in here should all comes from the scenario that found in the exhibit. You want to extend your elaboration based upon the background in the scenarios on the exhibit. That will make sure your real life example is still remain in time and relevant to the case. Well, take a look at the last box, which I draw up to you. Neither did most candidates use the example. So this message is telling you a lot of candidates are not good at answering the questions by quoting examples. Ask yourself, have you been doing this in the past examinations on APM? If you have done your APM exam before, if you haven't done this, guys, these are the new things that is worth trying to improve the quality of your answer. Okay? So, after hearing all the good things and the best practice that what examining team are saying, time for us to just do a wrap up. What are the existing habits that we should get rid of? What are the existing approach and technique that is non-value added, that is less productive? Get rid of it. Guys, the list of the bullet point that you saw here are usually the I will use the word bad habit. Example, reading without purpose. Especially if some of us would have the habit of reading the information again and again, but while you're reading, you don't really seem to know what is there to focus on. So that is something that you should try to avoid that. Answer without proper planning. In simple, waffling. <laughs> this is what a lot of students would like to just type nonstop. If you read the examiner report, um, before pandemic, you will notice that is a very famous slogan that quote in the examiner report for a few settings. And I would like to tell you, if you haven't been reading the examiner report in the past, I think this message is so real. The examining team say the prize winners answer script usually are much shorter than majority of the script who didn't get through. Guys, what's the meaning behind? Prize winner answer script are shorter than majority of the script who didn't get through. This message is telling you the importance of quality instead of quantity of answer. Instead of you writing two or three or four paragraphs, 
I would rather you write one short paragraph with all the terms, with all the content that addresses every task clearly and completely. That is what I meant. So obviously, I also have shared you with some tips. How do you do things within a located time? Well, the other one, overthinking. Now, I'm sure some of us would be on the other side of the category. It is a little bit too worry, a little bit too cautious, which up to the point, every sentence, every point that you read from the exhibit, you are too hesitant you have less confidence of moving forward and keep asking, what else have I missed? What else could I be missing? Overthinking is a signage of lacking of confidence or less adequate preparations before the examination. That is what I would say. And obviously, some of the emotional behavior, like getting overly excited in answering certain parts that you think you know, which otherwise. So that is something you want to get rid of. And obviously, a marker-friendly approach of presenting the answer is something that many students are not practicing on it. So try to get rid of this. The more you can get rid of this, the more chances for you to see your learning curve, your room for improvement is picking up sharply. Therefore, this is what I would recommend you to do. With the three hours and 15 minutes of the time in total, Plan around three hours. Over the three hours, spend about two and a half hours in attempting every part of the questions based upon 1.5 minutes per mark. What is it going to do with the half an hour? To me, the half an hour left behind is for you to go back and fill up those unattempted sections. When you write up all the heading, when you finish typing certain heading, if you found your time is running out, leave it there. Please go elsewhere. You want to grab the easy mark. I think this is what all the tutors will tell you. Grab the easy mark first. Time's up, go on. Make sure you grab the easy mark in all the tasks, in all the requirements. And you're going to leave some time for you to go back. And that's where the half an hour is for. And not to mention, the last 15 minutes of reading and planning, it's for you to go for any unplanned activities. Or if you really spend this time to read through the cases, by all means, go ahead. But with this kind of time management, I think it will be much, much better in control on the time constraint. In short, that is the sequence. That is the SOP. I would strongly recommend you to do it. Firstly, read the requirement. Then read the first exhibit, get the background. Followed by, turn on the second exhibit. If you need to read the appendix, go ahead. Pick up the specific task. And once you have that, plan carefully how many headings copy the task into your word processor. With this kind of skeleton, you make the empty piece of word processor into a template. Imagine that. You want to make the word processor from an empty piece of paper into a template with heading. You just go to the heading, respond and respond and respond within the context that is being asked. So once done, once done, make sure Focus on quality, focus on relevant answer instead of volume, just waffling. Stop doing that. When this is done, repeat the earlier step for the rest of the requirement. As long as you get yourself familiarized with these processes, guys, let's make this become an automated processes. Let's make it become your habit. It will be much more in control on your time management. That, to me, it's what we call JIT and TQM, do the right thing at the right time to avoid all the non-value added activity that cause us losing up our precious timing. Anyway, by the end, before we go for the live Q&A, I would like to now ask the following poll. Please respond to this. As you know, as part of the effort from the ACCA, we produce pre-mock examinations before every session. Well, guys, for the March examination, do you know when is the release date for the mock examination? Well, anyway, just give your best shot on responding to this. What do you think it is? Which one do you think? Which is the release date for the mock exam papers for you to give a try with all the habits and the processes which I've mentioned just now? What day is that? 
couple of seconds ago. Okay. Not bad, not bad, all right? So I think that quite a big number of us here are already aware what exactly is the right timing that you will get access and get practiced onto the mock exam. But what made me worry is that the spike of the percentage for the students who know the correct date is almost the same as the high of the students who have no idea the release date of the pre-mock. Guys, go back to the ACC website Go under the tab under APM on mock examination. Go in there. It will show you the date where the mock exam paper is released. It is on 12th February, two days before Valentine's. Anyway, once the mock exam is released, how about the debris video that shows you how do you approach the mock exam questions? Have you got any idea? Can you answer the poll? Do you know when is the mock exam debris videos be released and available for viewing? Anyone? Give a guess. Just give a shot on that. If I say the mock exam release date is on 12th of February, when do you think the release for the videos is going to be on? Well, let's take a look. Well, again, do you notice that? The, the, the shape of the curve is almost consistent as the awareness on the release date for the mock exam papers. And the correct answer is the first one, 16th of February, two days after your celebrations on the Valentine. Keep an eye on the mock exam and the video release date for the debrief. That definitely gives you a final push before the examinations in March to come. Okay. It's all from me now. And now, if you have questions for me, by all means, just raise it, type it in the Q&A chat box. I will be more than happy to answer as many as I could. Your side. OK, so uh, I have got some of the questions over here uh, from Manjima. OK, what's the difference between performance measurement and performance management? Well, that is a very specific question, yet it is very commonly asked by many of the APM students. With the limited time I spend here, I can give you some tips, uh, Manjima, and the rest of you. But if you want to know more in detail, please go to the study hub. You would find the meaning, the definitions of this too. In simple, performance measurement, it's just part of the exercise in performance management. I say again, performance measurement is just part of the exercise in performance management. So if I say this is performance management, performance measurement is part of the activity that is assessing the achievement of a person, of a group of people, or an organization as a whole, to find out to what extent the achievement has met the target or the objective. The finding processes is called performance measurement. Whereas performance management is much broader in the context of APM. When you answer the questions on performance management, please do not waffle. There will be incidents, there will be story, there will be problems mentioned in the accident. Performance management is for you to address those issues, those weaknesses, those problems that mentioned in the question, especially the CEO, the board of director would have thought of by introducing some new changes like BPR. By going through BPR, how do they address the issue? That is what we call performance management in general. OK, I hope that answer your questions, Manjima. Then we have another question from Ojo. Kindly guide me on how you would write the heading of your report, taking into consideration that the question says. Well, eh, that is something that is beyond the discussions in this uh, webinar, uh, I'm afraid, Ojo. But that is not a very difficult question that you can find the answer. Either you refer to the model answer. The model answer would have given you a, a, a template. The other suggestions for you, Ojo, and the rest of you who are asking the same question, how do I write a proper heading and the format of the report? I would suggest all of you strongly to go into the ACC website under APM, go under technical article. Guys, listen carefully. 
go on the technical article, read an article with the title called Performance Report. I can even tell you the title of the article. The article is the title of Performance Report. You will get a standard format and the layout, the best practice of showing your answer in a report answering questions. Okay, so Ojo, I hope that answer your questions. You will get the full skill of the guidance from the article title performance report. Another question is from Mark. Which of the practice questions on the study hub would you recommend is the most important? The exam format revision questions, other revision questions or study chapters get overwhelmed with the volume of questions. I totally understand your pain, uh, Mark, yes. Now, let me just give you a list of priorities given a time constraint, okay? My priority list on the uh, volume of the questions that I would like to attempt on my own as a student is number one, it's always on the top list. It's always the real past exam questions in the practice platform. Guys, have you counted how many set of real exam questions in the practice platform you would have it? including the past exam paper, practice exam, specimen exam, or I have counted for you, they have about 11 set. And that hasn't included the mock exam to come. 12 set is a dozen, it's a dozen of real exam questions. You've got to ask yourself, do you have enough time to attempt these 12 sets of the real exam questions? Now, if you say, yeah, you have more than enough time to try all these 12, you have more time to go then you go back to more questions practice in the study hub. But if you already struggle for your time to attempt this 12 set, you must as well just focus on this 12 set. Remember, quality of work is more important than quantity of work. So my answer for your questions is always attempt and practice the questions in the practice platform. That is your priority list number one. Okay, um, I have other questions to come over here. So I try to just answer as many as I can. Mohammed, so what's the suggested time to be spent per sections of the questions? Well, you have seen the way I allocate the time just now. I would go by 1.5 minutes per mark. So if you attempt the 50 marker questions, you will spend about 75 minutes. That is an hour and a quarter to attempt case study and you spend about 37 to 38 minutes for each of section B. And once time is up, go, okay? And make sure you have the last half an hour for you to go back, fill in the blank, okay? So that is my answer to you, Mohammed. We have another one from Twitter. Are we supposed to make a conclusion on what is written in the report? That is another commonly asked questions by many APM students. An official answer is yes, you should, because any report should always end it with a conclusion, an official answer. A more realistic answer, if you ask me, if you have time, you write conclusion. If time is precious to you, if time is already running out, leave conclusion aside. If you ask me to prioritize, that is my answer. Okay, Teresa, that is my answer for you. All right, so I have another one from Razam. In the exam, how do we identify when the questions want us to do an EVA calculation? Well, I suppose that now the questions is getting more and more specific. Okay, in, in fact, this is not only found on the questions for EVA. It is found in many of the tasks, like uh, how do I know? Should I do the calculation on ROI? Or how do I know I should do the calculation on RI? Well, the answer for this is that you got to follow the verb, the verb that found and embedded in the exhibit. If the exhibit say the CEO wants a demonstration on how it is derived, what do you think? Do you have to calculate? Yes, you have to, right? Nowadays, examining team are very kind. If examiner doesn't want you to calculate, they would normally write in this way in the exhibit and say, the board or the CEO do not want to know how to calculate, but they want to know how these tools is being used. Do you still want to calculate if they already stay in that way? So by reading through and practicing the past exam question, uh, Raza, I'm sure you will be able to understand very well what I just mentioned. Okay, Oven, 
we have another question from you. I'm still in SBL, or oh, I'm sitting SBL and APM at the same time. Do you have any tips on how to separate answer style between the two papers? Wonderful, that is a good question, Oven. Any one of you who have the same questions that Oven, I'll suggest you go back to ACCA website under APM, look out for, again, technical articles. Guys, go for the technical article. That is one article that is purposely addressing to all the students how to differentiate the type of questions answering skill for SBL and APM. Okay, you must read the article. The article's title is called like they used to call the difference between P13 and P5. Now it turned into the title, what is the difference between paper strategic business leader and advanced performance management? You must read that article. But Owen, if you look at my hand, okay, in simple, if this is what SBL is asking for a model, for a tool, okay, SBL, APM usually would ask what's next? What's next after the tools, after the model? So it is the second part of the questions that is APM that is asking, but the earlier one is usually asked in SBL. If you want to know what I'm saying, please go back to some of the practice questions. Look up for some similar models like forces, Porter Five Forces or BCG matrix questions in APM. Comparing to that of SBL, you can see the difference. Okay, so we have another question from Nuiza. Uh, with the APM paper, some questions asked about specific topic uh, like target costing, Kaizen costing. I notice the answer always provide paragraph about the meaning of this term. Does it type of paragraph give us mark? Well, in simple, will definition, will defining the terms grant us the mark? My answer for you in APM, if you just purely defining what is the meaning of target costing, what is the meaning of TQM, without further elaborating, without relating the definition to redress the task, I would say if you get a mark, you probably will get half a mark if it is not zero. It will never be one full mark because the question is not asking you to define. The reason why you define is because that the definition allows you to further elaborate in depth how to address the issue based upon the keywords in the definition. That is the purpose of defining the model in APM, okay? So we have the next questions, Manjima again. Uh, what's the difference between performance? Well, same thing, I have answered already, okay? Right, so I suppose that this is all we have here already. Have I, have I missed anything? Okay, so let's pick up on this. Can you explain, Faiz, uh, briefly how to get the professional mark? Um, again, because of time constraint, I'll suggest you Go to the ACCA website on APM. APM. If you go into the another item called professional skills marks, it is different from technical article. There is one item called professional skills mark. Click in there. Take a look at the suggestions from the short video. In each of the skills, how are you supposed to write? What is the word you're supposed to use to demonstrate those kind of skills accordingly? Okay, nice. Right, so we have another one from uh, Park City. I had back fail on 47 and 47. Yeah, I understand, that is really painful. But remember, if you have encountered any marginal failure, I would see it in this way, okay? There must be some reason why the marking team do not want to push you through to get 50 marks. After all, there's only three marks differences. There must be some crucial factor that you don't deserve a pass. And usually, the crucial factor are found in the list of the bad habits, which I have mentioned just now. Okay, you're not you're not answering the questions evenly. You overly answer on the first part of the questions, but you come to the end, you are in the rush. That's why you are not responding evenly. That is some things that you may want to just take a look. Okay, I think with the time is running out, I can only uh, take up the last questions from Mooney. What is the best exam approach, starting from questions one, two, or three? I will not give you the only suggestion because uh, no matter which one that you go, each one of you would have your own rationale behind. But to me, 
whatever question, whatever sequence you want to start, I'm okay. As long as you do not leave your questions one to attempt last. You understand what I'm saying? Do not attempt questions one last. That is a bad idea. The rest of the sequence, I leave it to you. Okay, so I think I have taken up uh, most of the questions already by now. Yeah, uh, over back to you, Martin. The floor is yours. Great, thank you. Thank you, Zikang. Um, I think right. we are just right on time to bring this session to a close. So many thanks for sharing your insights and you know breaking down the examiner's reports. And I just like to encourage everyone to just head over to the ACCA website, the APM section. That examiner's report is there for you to download and review and apply what you know we have learned in this session. Just a quick reminder that the topic uh, explainer videos are also available. You will find this in um, the page that has the technical articles, as well as the ACCA student support uh, YouTube channel. So navigate there to APM playlist. You will find the topic explainers for a couple of topics that you know sometimes can be challenging. Uh, watch those, and it will help you a big way in in, in your preparations. Please don't forget the mock exams and the debrief videos as well. Like Z has, has, has mentioned, those give you the perfect chance to, you know, simulate the exam environment on the practice platform, do it to time, practice your time management, debrief, and, you know, uh, boost your preparations as well. So that's all the time we had for the session today. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining in. You can watch at the recording of this session again. You should receive an email tomorrow with a link to what's recording. And please do share with us your feedback at the end of this session. Thank you so much and good luck to everyone as you prepare for your APM exams. Good luck to all and happy Lunar New Year to, for those of you who are celebrating. Take care. Great, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.